Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. This is the third in our series, Beginner's Guide to the Desktop, and in this video we're going to take a look at basic text editing and using the clipboard. Text editing is a very important skill to at least have an understanding of if you're going to be using Linux because in the Linux system a lot of configuration files, logs, all kinds of stuff is stored as plain text. And every now and again, you might want to get in there and edit a text file. The first thing to understand is that we're talking about plain text files. We're not talking about files that you would generate in a word processor that are formatted. So let's open up LibreOffice. And I can open up a file here. And we'll just take a look at it. And you see I've got text on the screen. I got a nice font. I've got bold text, that sort of thing like that going on. Hyperlinks are in here, all kinds of stuff. So this is what is called a formatted document file or a formatted text file, something like that. If I take that exact same file that we just looked at in LibreOffice and then I just try and print it on the screen using the, the concatenate command, what you're going to see is unrecognizable. So I have just opened up that file and now look what we got. I mean, it's just gobbledygook. That's because this file is stored in a format and in particular this one is stored in ODT. You may be familiar with files that have extensions like doc, docx, uh, Abbey Word has its own extensions. That's another word processor. So there are lots of extensions that denote files that have to be opened up with a program that can read whatever format they were stored in. Plain text is not like that. Plain text is plain text. So let's open up a plain text file with LibreOffice. We'll start there. Because LibreOffice will open up plain text and I have this little text file. So now you see that we have a plain text file on the screen. And this is a funny thing that a friend of mine sent me a long time ago and it's in mock German. And so therefore the spell checker is going insane with it but it's a nice short little text file to work with. And you see that we can edit this, we can change things. It is possible to work with text files in your word processor. It will save in plain text. However, it's a bit cumbersome and there are lighter weight tools that allow you to do that. Pretty much every desktop environment everywhere comes with a basic text editor. And this is here because in every operating system, Mac, Windows, doesn't make no difference, Every now and again, you're going to have to work with plain text files. A lot of information is stored that way. Just to uh, prove a point here before we start looking at a lighter tool, that file that we just looked at, I can type out on the screen and you'll be able to read everything in it. So I'm going to type cat, German, or most of the word, and then use the tab to autofill. And now that text types out on the screen and you can read it. Well, have at it. <laughs> now, let's talk about lightweight text editors. We're using Linux Mint 17.3, so the text editor that comes with that by default is gedit. Uh, in Linux Mint 18, that has been forked to a new application called xed, and of course there are more updated versions of gedit out there. So let's open up gedit, take a look around, and look in there. So this kind of looks like a scaled down little word processor. And we have got some tools here. Uh, we can do spell checking here and all kinds of little things, but we're not going to be able to format the text. Whatever we type in here is going to be saved as plain text. So we can go and find a plain text file. So let's, uh, let's just go to open. And then we have this already listed on recent, so we'll open this one. This is what it looks like running in gedit. Now gedit is groovy and you can use it to edit text files. You can do use this to create scripts. You can use gedit to program. If you want to write code, it's fine. It's a great little application. There are tons of applications available in Linux to work with text and some people are quite passionate about which one they want to use. Uh, years and years ago the debate was between Emacs and Vim or just in those days it was just called Vi or Vi 
and now it's called Vim because there's a newer version of it. And those are very early text editors with a lot of powerful features for people who are going to be writing code all the time. I'm not going to take a look at either one of those. I haven't even looked at Emacs in years and years because there's all kinds of lightweight tools out there and I don't do a lot of text editing anyway. And so, therefore, just to put it out there that there's all kinds of text editors. If this is something you get into, you want to start programming, you might want to learn how to use one of them suckers. Okay, uh, where are we at here? So we were looking at plain text. So let's talk about editing system configuration files with a text editor. And we'll start out with gedit here since it is installed. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go to open. I'm going to go file system. I'm going to look in the et Etsy directory or etc. And scroll down here. Let's find a configuration file to look at. And a lot of stuff in Etsy, that's for sure. Well, let's look at FS tab. Now, this is a very important configuration file on your system because when your computer boots up, this tells the system where all of your data is stored and if you go messing around in this file and you don't know what you're doing you could very well make your computer not boot so I don't suggest doing this but it's a convenient file to look at this is a typical Linux configuration file not much to it with uh, gedit I can read this file it will even allow me to go in here and make a change to it so let's just go down here and type hi okay but I am not going to be able to save this see save is blanked out and the reason why is because I am not running gedit with administrator privileges it needs to be run as root if you are going to actually be making changes to system files in gedit some desktops allow you to right click on the icon and it'll say something like run as administrator I don't think that this is one of them I don't think Cinnamon allows you to do that, so let's see what happens. Nope, I don't get that option. So if I was actually going to edit that file and want to do something with it, I need to run this with administrator privileges. Quickest way to do that is to open up a terminal, type in sudo gedit, and then the, loca the location and the name of the file. So in this case, we know it's Etsy. And it's FS tab. Now, when I open up the file, you'll see that not only uh, do I get the text, but if I go to save here, I can actually save changes because I'm running this as the administrator. You can do the same thing with LibreOffice. You could open it up as the administrator and then put the file name in there. Still a little bit cumbersome for working with text files in a Linux system. Had to pause the video there. Mailman brought me some goodies at the door. So we were talking about using the graphical text editor to work with configuration files. That can be a bit cumbersome. So let me show you real quick the editor that I usually use in the terminal if I have to get in here and do some work with a configuration file because it, it's just quicker once you know how to do it. I mean, if you're going to be working with all kinds of uh, scripts and text files, then using a graphical-based text editor is fine. But if you're just going to be jumping in here and changing stuff in files very quickly, then let me show you my friend here. It's called Nano. And I want to show you a little thing about Nano here that you might find happening with text editors that you open up in a terminal. Let's open up that same text file that we've been looking at. You'll notice that the text is one big line. And that is because there are no returns in here. There are no line starts or line stops. And that's when you actually hit the return key. When this file was created, it just created one big long line of text. So I'm using the arrow key to move my cursor to go through it and read it. So if you open up a terminal-based text editor and you get something like this, that is because there just are no uh, returns in that file. Nano will allow you to do what's called a justify where it will put returns in the file and make it more logical if you want to. And I think I'm actually going to do that just simply because of the fact that 
this is kind of a strange way to store a text file. So I'll show you how that works and that is justify. So control J will give me the ability to justify. And now what it's done is it's split it up into a paragraph and we have returns uh, over here that um, split it up into lines. To save something in Nano, once you have edited it, which I actually have done here, just moving things around, the output, uh, for, the command rather for that is control O and it's going to prompt you for a file name. If it's the same file that you're working on, great, just do this. And now my little file is saved. And that's pretty much it for working with Nano. So that is the, the just the bare basics of text editing right there. Uh, make sure that that's saved okay. Yep, it's saved fine, and now you see that we have our returns, so that makes a little bit more sense. So we have looked at working with basic, basic text editors, and now what we want to look at is working with the clipboard and moving text around and using cut, copy, and paste. Some of you who have been using computers for a long, long time are probably going to say, why on earth are you even doing this? You would be amazed at the number of people that I have worked with that don't understand the basics of cut, copy, and paste using the clipboard. The clipboard is a little program that runs in the background, and all it does, it just hangs on to whatever information you stick on it, and then you can put it somewhere else. So let us go ahead and open up LibreOffice, just because I think this will be more a, a bit prettier. And we'll open up that same document just to have some text to play with on the screen here. So let's say I want to get I want to uh, do something with this text elsewhere. Well, I can highlight it. I'm just holding down the left key on the mouse and highlighting the text. And then I can right click and you see we have copy. So what does copy do? Well, copy just put that on the clipboard. It is now on the clipboard on this computer. So it's just sitting there and I can paste it again. I can also come over here and let's just open up uh, gedit. Enter. And I am going to paste again. See, paste is the only option available to us. And now I have taken that text from that document and I have put it over here. So it's just sitting here in the clipboard and it's just going to stay here until I add something else to the clipboard. So I can just start pasting this all over the place if I want to. So let's go to a terminal. Let's open up Nano. Just a plain Nano. It'll even work in an advanced terminal. Watch this, paste. There's the same text showing up in Nano. So that is how I can move things around. So that's just copy and paste. That's all that is right there. I'm going to leave gedit open because I want to show you what cut does. So if I highlight this text, now I'm going to cut it. It goes away, but it's still sitting on the clipboard. It didn't go away. I can come here and I can paste it here. So I'm using the little right click menus to do this sort of thing in the applications, but there are actually shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, and there are mouse shortcuts that you can use to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to, the keyboard shortcuts uh, change from application to application. You'd have to go look that up. Usually it's like uh, control C is copy, except you can't use that in a terminal because it'll stop your running process and control V to paste or something like that. I never, I never do it that way. I always just use the mouse. So let's go ahead and recopy this again. Now I've highlighted that text and I'm going to copy it. Now if I want to put this in Nano, in Linux, we have a middle click. And with most desktops, the middle click pastes. What is a middle click? Well, years ago, there used to be three button mice. You'd have a right key, a left key, and a middle key. 
middle click on most modern mice is one of two things. Either you, if you have a scroll key, the middle click is just pushing that button. So that did that. And then the other thing is to press right and left together. So let's go ahead and do that. And you see we get the same result. So that is just really basic cut, copy, and paste. Now, there are some reasons why you may want to use a text editor to do a, a copy from something like a web page. Let me show, give you a for instance here. No, don't, yeah, don't save. Let's, let's, we got a pretty much clear slate here. So let's start out, let's go to a web page. And we're going to open up a web page and I want to copy some text out of that web page. Okay, took a little while to load. Okay, so um, I don't know. Let's just open up uh, easylinux.com. That's a good place to go. All right, so for some reason you want to cut this, take this text out of here. So I'm going to copy that. And now, uh, let's say that I'm working on a LibreOffice document or an email. So we're just going to use the document as a, a, an example here. Could be anything. So I could be writing a letter and I could say, check this out. And then I want to cut this text into here. Paste. Well, you'll notice that it took all of the formatting from the website with it. So now we have the font size and everything is different from what we're working on. Now, of course, you can go back in and you can change this. We could highlight this. You know, we could say, okay, well, I, I need a different font here, that sort of thing. But no, I'm not even going to do all that. And what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to cut this. Actually, I'm just deleting it. I'm using the delete key which is usually a shortcut for cut. And I'm going to go back here and I've already copied this. So what I'm going to do is a trick to get rid of all that formatting. I'm going to open up gedit. And now I'm going to paste it here. So this is the same text from my page except that it is now in plain text format. So you could go through here and you could edit this and you could do whatever you wanted to do with it. So I'm going to do control all and let's see, I'm going to see what the, let's see, edit here. The copy command is control C and G edit. So I'm now copying that with a keyboard command. Now I'm going to come back over here to LibreOffice. Go back up on this line, make sure now when I paste this, it follows the same formatting because I did not copy all of that formatting originally. I used the text editor to convert that to plain text in the memory of the computer. This is a very nice little thing to do. I'm sure there's other ways to get around formatting and you can go back and do that. But if you're putting together a document and you're cutting, uh, you're copying and pasting from a lot of different sources, you want everything to be nice and consistent, this is one way to do it. So anyway, there is a basic, basic look at cutting and copying and pasting and working with text files. There is way, way more to that. And you can, of course, go and find out more about it by looking that up for yourself. And I think the next time around here for the desktop, we're going to dive into file managers, working with files and moving things around. So that will be episode four coming up very shortly. Thank you for watching this. Do check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great articles about Linux. Check out Easy Linux on the web if you'd like me to help you get started with Linux. Also, check out Easy Linux on Facebook, and if you would, give it a like. Thank you for watching. We will do it again soon.